I beat you again. Rematch. Ziri, what's wrong? We have just received a distress call from the Milky Way galaxy. Oh no! What planet? Searching. Ear? No, Earth. The human planet. Oh, I remember that from intergalactic studies. We better check this out. Ziri, take us to Earth. It's so pretty. I don't see anything wrong. Ziri? There you are, Ziri. Wow, you look good as a human. The distress call was sent by a human scientist who realized the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was reaching dangerous levels. What level? Why is it dangerous? It turns out that the distress call was sent over 50 years ago, when the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere was at 300 parts per million. Now it's at 400 parts per million. What does the carbon dioxide do to Earth's atmosphere? When solar radiation enters Earth's atmosphere, some is absorbed by Earth's surface and some is re-emitted as long-wave radiation. Certain gases in Earth's atmosphere, such as carbon dioxide, absorb this long-wave radiation and radiate part of it back to Earth, causing Earth's climate to warm. This is called the greenhouse effect and is important in making Earth warm enough for human life. However, humans have now released so much carbon dioxide into Earth's atmosphere they are causing Earth's climate to warm and change in dangerous ways. Where are all these carbon emissions coming from? Mostly from human activity. Let me show you. Wow, Earth looks a lot different up close. This is Tokyo, the largest city on Earth, with a population of over 35 million humans. Today, over half of the humans live in cities like these. In the past 50 years, Earth population has more than doubled. There are over 7 billion humans on Earth and expected to reach 8 billion humans in less than 10 years. This is Los Angeles, in the area of Earth called the United States. Oh my galaxy! What is this mess? This mess is called traffic, and it's created when too many Earth pods called cars try to travel on the Earthways at the same time. The cars burn petroleum, which is a fossil fuel. Fossil fuels? What's a fossil fuel? Fossil fuels are made by drilling the carbon remains of living organisms from billion years ago. This is processed into fuels which humans use to power their cars, homes, and pretty much everything they use. Burning these fuels releases all of the, these billions of years worth of carbon back into the atmosphere. Oh, I get it. So that's where all the extra carbon is coming from. That is trapping the extra heat on Earth. Let's find some humans and see what they use and eat. Beam that up. Let's take a look. What is this? It looks like water? Why is it in this bottle? Where did it come from? The water and it came from Fiji, an island in the Pacific that is over 5,000 miles from Los Angeles, and the plastic bottle that came from another 3,000 miles away. They don't have water in Los Angeles? Tell us more about this human water in bottles, Ziri. Yes, humans have fresh water delivered to their homes through sinks. But in the United States, they drink over 10 billion gallons of bottled water every year. Half of this bottled water is filtered tap water, and the plastic is made of fossil fuels. Oh, I see. So they use fossil fuels to make the bottle, then they use more fossil fuels to ship it to Fiji, and then even more to Los Angeles. That's a lot of fossil fuels for one bottle of water. Let's beam up something else. Where did this come from? This is a banana. It is from Ecuador, which is 3,500 miles from Los Angeles. They even move their real food around with fossil fuels. Yes, that's why such a large percentage of carbon emissions come from industry and transportation. Agriculture also produces other greenhouse gases like methane waste 
from all the cows humans eat and nitrous oxide from fertilizers. Forestry, don't the trees absorb carbon? When humans cut down trees, it releases the carbon stored in them into the atmosphere. For example, the largest rainforest on Earth contains up to 140 billion metric tons of carbon. It is called the Amazon. We want to see it. Beam up the Amazon. That's not possible. It's over 2 million square miles. I can beam you down so you can see it. Okay, let's go to the Amazon. I don't see any Amazon. Where are all the trees? Look, cows! It's communicating! We don't understand you. Let's get out of here. Cows are scary, Ziri. Where'd the Amazon go? And why were there cows there? Cattle ranching causes over 80% of deforestation in the Amazon. Rainforests like the Amazon used to cover 14% of Earth's surface, and now they only cover 6%. That's where the other 17% of greenhouse gas emissions are coming from. So the trees could be helping the humans collect the carbon from the atmosphere, but if they cut them down, they're actually adding to the problem. No wonder there's so much carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. Yes, so if the concentration of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere is already 100 parts per million higher than when the distress call was sent, is Earth's climate already changing? Even though Earth's average temperature has changed less than 1 degree Celsius, there are already significant changes on the planet. Like what? Maybe the cold places are melting. Siri, take us to the coldest place on Earth. Ah! It's freezing! My toes are froze! We're on a floating piece of ice. What if we fall in this freezing water? Let's get out of here! Why was the ice in so many pieces? The Arctic ice is melting three times faster than it was a decade ago. Melting glaciers and the warming of the ocean has already caused oceans on Earth to rise 8 inches and sea level is predicted to rise 3 feet in the next 100 years. Low-lying islands are especially in danger and some are already being impacted. Take us to one of these islands. Wow, it's so beautiful here. Yes, but Ziri is right. There are no mountains or higher land. I can see how even a foot of sea level rise would cause big problems here. I want to see what's under the ocean. You'll ruin your robe! Oh, it's wet. Ziri, beam us to the USO! Wow, it's beautiful! There's so much life under the ocean! What is that? It's gigantic! Ziri, get us out of here! Yeah, Ziri, it was beautiful. There were all these colorful underwater rocks. Yeah, except for that giant underwater cow. What was that? That was a whale. At least half of the living things on Earth live in the ocean. Those colorful rocks are called coral. The living organisms inside them give them their color. The oceans also absorb over a quarter of all carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere. So just like the forests, the oceans help the Earth absorb carbon. Why can't the ocean just absorb all the carbon? Because after they absorb a certain amount, the extra carbon in Earth's atmosphere reacts with the ocean water and makes it more acidic. The oceans getting warmer and more acidic is affecting living things like coral, which are important to marine ecosystems. So if the ocean is warming and the atmosphere is already 0.8 degrees warmer, does that mean everywhere on Earth is already warmer? Not exactly. Even though average temperatures are high this year in almost the entire northern hemisphere, the northeast of the United States is having record low temperatures and lots of snow. Snow! I want to see it. it it's so cold. Hey, look at this! Catch! 
That's it. I'm out. Hey, you took my beam up wand. Ziri, it's so cold down there. How could the earth be getting warmer? Yes, Earth's average temperature is getting warmer, but climate change also causes unpredictable changes in weather patterns. That means that places throughout Earth will experience storms, flooding droughts, extreme high and low temperatures, and other changes that human scientists cannot accurately predict. This will impact where food can be grown and where humans can live throughout Earth. But Ziri, do the humans even know this is happening? Aren't they worried? Yes, there are scientists that are trying to warn humans about what could happen to Earth if carbon levels keep rising. So are the humans listening to the scientists and trying to reduce the carbon emissions? Yes, somewhat. Humans are beginning to harness renewable energy from the wind, sun, and even waves to power things they use. Some human communities are trying to grow more of their food locally to use less fossil fuels. Human engineers are experimenting with new eco-buildings and even eco-cities, which produce little or no carbon waste and function like living ecosystems. Look, there's plants growing everywhere, even on the walls. That looks like a wonderful place to live. But if humans are going to control their carbon emissions, they need to make these changes very quickly. Yes, we must tell the humans about all the things we've learned on our visit here and warn them they need to act quickly. The human scientist that sent the distress call lives here. Want to beam him up? Yes, no, beam him no. up. That's called abduction. Humans don't like that. Okay, let's beam down. We are the Universe Protection League, and we come in peace. Aliens! Aliens! My grandfather was right! I knew you were real! We received your distress call, but it seems we are 50 years too late, so we must act quickly. Distress call? Oh, that, that wasn't me, that was my grandfather. He sent out that distress call once the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere reached 300 parts per million. He kept talking about how aliens would come and assist us, but everyone just thought he was crazy. Yes, we came and explored your planet and saw everything that was contributing to this change in the climate. We need to warn your humans of their irresponsibilities before it is too late. But how? I'm just an adolescent. What am I supposed to do? We have the capability to intercept all human technology we want you to host a broadcast warning your fellow humans of the changes they are making to their planet. We took pictures of our experiences and you can use it as your proof. All right, let's do it. But first, Sophie! Hello fellow Earthlings, first of all, aliens are real, I told you mom. These aliens are from the Universe Protection League and they are here to help us. Carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is reaching dangerous levels, which is causing our climate to change. We need to change our ways before it's too late.